Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage. This is Brian Ewan. This is Bernard Jukley. You know Bernard. He is our shop foreman. Uh, you remember the early days of, of uh, 3D printing where you had to make it in plastic? You know, remember those days like four years ago? Well, <laughs> forget that. We've moved on. We've been using our 3D printer. What we usually do is you make a mold in plastic. You make it, what, 1% bigger usually, right, to allow for shrinking. Exactly. And then we'd send it out and, and, and have, have a test. Done. Well, forget that. You don't need that anymore. Now, you can go directly to metal printing. Um, I'm not even going to pretend to understand this. Bernard has been taking courses in it. He's going to walk us through it. But when you have old parts like this for a white steam car, there are barely any cars left, let alone parts. This is a revelation. You can actually have parts made in metal of a better quality than it even was originally. So, uh, Bernard, did you tell us, guys? Well, originally we just designed the part on the computer and then printed it just to prove that we were correct with the design and the dimensions. And then we turned it over to Bry to, to make us a metal part. Okay. And the name of your company yeah. is? Stratasys Direct Manufacturing. Okay. So direct manufacturing means you... Make it right now, I guess. That's great. Right. Okay. So directly from a print or, yes, or, or a computer file, a, I should we say. We take a CAD model and we, we, uh, we print a part directly from that. Yes, sir. And what is it powdered metal? How, is that what it is? It is, yes, sir. And it's bonded by heat, laser, what? We use a, a high-powered uh, fiber laser. Okay. That fires down into the, uh, into the powder bed. In fact, I'll show you right here. Okay. So this is the inside of the machine. You've got your powder bed, your, your, your powder here, your build plate is right here and the laser fires down from above um, and essentially what we're doing is we're, we're micro welding the material. And what is that temperature? Uh, it's actually uh, more or less ambient inside the inside the chamber. Okay. Um, any heat that's in there is just residual from the, the build plate or the, uh, the laser firing. Okay. Okay. So but it generates enough heat to fuse the metal. That's correct. So it's, it's, a fi it's a 400 watt laser. We don't typically use that much power when we're building, but, uh, but we have it if we need it. And what is that in degrees? How many degrees would that be? That's a great question. I honestly don't know. Yeah, okay. Okay, now I'll tell you why this is really important, especially if you're an old car person. Let's say you've got an old Bonneville. You know a piece of script that says Bonneville? Hey, you can't find those. There aren't any 65 Bonnevilles in junkyards anymore. Mm -hmm. But now you can either you can scan one, or you can, you can draw one up yourself, mm -hmm. and you can make it in, in a higher quality metal than the pot metal it was made with originally. I mean, there's no part for any automobile, motorcycle, steam engine that can't be reproduced. You know, the idea of going on uh, eBay or, 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 you know, just trying to find old guys that got stuff in their garage, you can make every single part. I mean, this is a really, this is the pilot to a... Yeah. Uh, and, white steam car. And if you look at these these tubes here, these are actually tubes. They're yeah. hollow. Yeah, these are hollow. The actual With, see the gas. This is a burner. This this you use this to uh, like a pilot light in your water heater for your steam car, and it comes out with all the. Uh, it's amazing. I mean, ex exactly as it left the factory, better than it left the factory. You're not going to find any of these. They don't exist anymore. You know, some old guy's got one in a barn. That's the cool part. We have made, using the old plastic process, we've made connecting rods for the steam engines. Mm -hmm. We've made pistons. Well, now we don't have to make it in plastic anymore. We go right to metal. And what is the yeah. metal exactly? Yeah. What is the? This material is Inconel 718. Okay, so it's it's not some. It's a real high quality. It's a, it's a nickel-based super alloy. Okay. Yes, sir. Heat resistant. Very heat resistant, yeah. uh, very corrosion resistant. It's a very tough material. Even you're not going to burn this one. Wow. It's <laughs> amazing. And is this the only metal you can use with this or can you use different metals? No, sir. We actually run uh, seven different materials at uh, Stratasys Direct. Uh, we run an Econ L718. We also run Econ L625. We have aluminum, uh, titanium 64 cobalt chrome, and then two types of stainless. One is a 17.4 pH and a 316 L. Now, if, if someone's going to buy one of these machines, that's how old I am, I'm calling it a machine. If someone's going to buy one of these for a business or their home use, well, what would they run? They're, they're different levels? So we've got 14 of these machines. If you were to buy uh, one of the, the types that we have, mm -hmm. um, you're looking at a million dollars. Oh, well, that's just, good. Just to put it on the floor. That's a little high for a piece of script that says Bonneville. <laughs> you actually might find a piece of script that says Bonneville for less than a million dollars. But can people come to you with the thing they need? Yes, sir. That's actually cheaper than buying it for a million dollars. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would okay. agree. 
So do you have, are these centers set up around different cities right now or just getting into the marketplace? So Stratasys Direct, uh, as a company, we've got seven locations uh, in the U.S. Our metals operations are in Central Texas. Okay. So uh, Austin and then about 60 miles north of there in Belton. I mean, can people walk in with a one-off piece or is it something where, no, you've got to make 300 of these? For it to be viable. Not at all. We do everything from one to to low thousands. Oh, okay. Well, that's pretty good. So oh, okay. we we need more of these. We need more of these. <laughs> and what would the what would the cost of something like this be to reproduce? Uh, a good estimate um, is about five or six hundred dollars per vertical inch. Okay. Uh, because we're building layer additively, that's kind of what we we look at things in terms. Okay. Of so what do we have? Here? Are you thinking this is four inches? About a thousand bucks to make one that's, of these. That's so once you make one for a thousand, is the second one a thousand also? Or have you got, have you now got the finished product? You so know? your so your economies of scale and our process are found by filling up the build plate. So again, back to the drawing. If if you've got your build platform here, uh, which which for our machines. Um, is essentially nine and a half by nine and a half inches of useful space. All right. um, and so the economies of scale in this process are found by filling up that build plate. So if I just build you one at a time, uh, you're not getting the benefits of that economy of scale. But if I can fit, say, six or eight of those in the build, and I build you all those just, at one time, right. now your piece price comes, them comes down below $1,000. Okay. Stack them all together and so, see how many So you one would be 1,000, and let's say five might be. Three thousand or four thousand, right? Something of that's that fair. nature. Yes, okay. Sir. Yep. Well, that's not bad. That's not. That's not bad. And there's really no part you can't make, correct? Very few limitations. Yeah. Yes, sir. The, the neat part is like, we drew this in Gibbs because I was thinking of machining it. Uh, it would involve quite a bit of machining to get all these cross drillings done and all that. And by by him printing it, we already got that done. So. Right. Think about it. There's nothing you can't reproduce. I mean, if we were, uh, if we were uh, um, like archaeologists or something, like making dinosaurs. I mean, that's what it is. You you take things that no longer exist, and now they exist again. So how do people just go on the internet, and that's how they can find the locations of stratasysdirect.com. Okay, is our website, and uh, you know, there's obviously there's location information. There's a way to uh, request a quote on there. Right. Uh, there's all kinds of information on all of the technologies that we uh, we deploy in order to to do stuff like this. Okay, you realize every crazy guy I know is now going to call you. All right, that's so. outstanding. There you go. There you go. How how long does it take you to to make something like if we sent you uh, a, a drawing or a a 3D model? How long does it take to make this part? I mean, so we're talking weeks, months, days. Um, you're if everything's squared away. Um, our, our metals folks are going to uh, scrutinize the drawing and make sure you know that it's buildable and it's going to mm -hmm. be uh, successful for everybody. Um, that doesn't take very long. So once uh, once a, a part is is ready to go and it's in a machine, um, you're looking at seven to ten days probably on average. Now here's a question. Let's say you're an old guy like me, and you're not quite sure if you scan something correctly or if you take the measurements properly. Can I send you my old part? And you can scan it and do it that way, or do you? Uh, so yes, you, sir. Okay, so that's probably if you've got something small or something that fits in a normal size box, they could send you the part, and and you could uh, you could build it from that. You bet. Yep. Is that a better way to do it? I I don't know that it's better, but it's it's an option. Well, at least um, the mistake is, you know. It's our mistake and not yours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When it comes back wrong, it's that, yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, we we do quite I'm a bit of that. all the time. We. Uh, we, we reverse engineer parts, yeah. uh, and, and this is a great example of that where you've got um, an obsolete part, so to speak, um, and like you've already said, that you can't go and acquire any other way, yeah. so we'll reverse engineer it. So did you guys develop this technology? Is this something that you guys... No, sir, we did not. Now, okay. Stratasys, our parent company, uh, d has developed a couple of, of additive processes, 3D printing processes, right. and, and you've got a couple of their right. machines. Um, but, uh, but for Stratasys Direct, we are... Um, this is not a, a Stratasys uh, technology, and right. so, but but because we're a parts manufacturer and a service provider, uh, we we can't really be married to one technology. So we have to be able to. So ideally, if I'm in Los Angeles and somebody in New York wants something, rather than even ship it across the country, you would call your office in New York and they would print it there and they would pick it up there. So yes, that, that, that would be the intent, would be that you, you wouldn't have to make a part here and ship it to New York, uh, that it could be produced uh, close to home, so to speak. So the idea is you would have these just 
all over the place, every major city? Yes, we, we would have uh, our location strategically placed um, all over North America, really. Where you think the business is? That's correct. Yeah, yes, cool, sir. Cool. It's, it's really an amazing process, and it's always funny when I meet guys in my age group, old-time guys that work with lasers and things like that, and you show them this stuff, and they're just astounded by it, mm -hmm. you know. But if you've got parts like this that not only you can't identify, you don't even know what it is, and they can make you another one. So if you've got something you have no idea what it is, they'll make you another one. <laughs> so that's, now you have two of them. So that's pretty still good. don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so where are you now? Are you in Los Angeles? We are in the LA area, yes sir, uh, San Diego area. Okay. Uh, we've got two locations in Arizona, the two in Texas that I mentioned where our metals okay. operations are, okay. um, and then Eden Prairie, Minnesota. Okay, because now you're going to be overrun with guys that have Harley Davidson knucklehead seat mounts and other things that they can't find anywhere that you guys are going to be able to reproduce. So it's really terrific, terrific technology. Here's a website again. Go check it out. Uh, it's, 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 it's saved our butt a million times here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank yes, you. sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Rick.